If life on Earth was wiped out, we'd be stuck out here, homeless, adrift in a hostile universe. We need to find another home. Among the millions, billions of planets, there must be one that's not too hot, not too cold, with air, sunlight, water. We're like Goldilocks. We could comfortably live. The Red Planet. Unmistakably Mars. For centuries, we've looked to Mars for company, for signs of life. Could there be extraterrestrial life here? Are we ready to rewrite the history books, to tear up the science books, to turn our world upside down? What happens next could change everything. Mars is the planet that most captures our imagination. Think of B-movies, sci-fi comics. What follows? Martians. It's all just fiction, right? But what if there really is something here? Hard to imagine, though. Up close, this is a dead planet. The activity that makes the Earth livable shut down millions of years ago here. Red and dead. Mars is a giant fossil. Wait. Something is alive. A dust devil. A big one. Bigger than the biggest twisters back home. There's wind here. And where there's wind, there's air. Could that air sustain extraterrestrial life? It's too thin for us to breathe. And there's no ozone layer. Nothing to protect us against the sun's ultraviolet rays. There is water, but frigid temperatures keep it in a constant deep freeze. It's hard to believe anything could live here. Back on Earth, there are creatures that survive in extreme cold, heat, even in the deepest ocean trenches. It's as though life is a virus. It adapts, spreads. Maybe that's what we're doing right now, carrying the virus of life across the universe. Even in the most extreme conditions, life usually finds a way. But on a dead planet, with no way to replenish its soil, no heat to melt its frozen water. All this dust, it's hard to see where we're going. Olympus Mons, named after the home of the Greek gods a vast, ancient volcano, three times higher than Everest. There's no sign of activity. Since its discovery in the 1970s, it's been declared extinct. Hang on. These look like lava flows, but any sign of lava should be long gone, obliterated by meteorite craters, unless... This monster isn't dead, just sleeping. There could be magma flowing beneath the crust right now, building up, waiting to be unleashed. Volcanic activity could be melting frozen water in the soil, pumping gases into the atmosphere, recycling minerals and nutrients, creating all the conditions needed for life. This makes the Grand Canyon look like a crack in the sidewalk. Endless desolation, so fast, 
it would stretch all the way across North America. But here, signs of activity, erosion, and what looks like dried up riverbeds. Maybe volcanic activity melted ice in the soil, sending water gushing through this canyon. Underground volcanoes could still be melting ice, creating water. And where there's water, there could be life. The hunt for life is spearheaded by this humble fellow, the NASA rover Opportunity. It's finding evidence that these barren plains were once ancient lakes or oceans that could have harbored life. Look at those gullies. Probes orbiting Mars keep spotting new ones. More proof that Mars is alive and kicking. That water is flowing beneath its surface right now. Water that could be sustaining Martian life. Now all we have to do is find it. Maybe we've already found what we're looking for on Earth. Some think that life started here and then migrated to Earth. An asteroid impact could have blasted fragments of Mars, complete with tiny microbes, out into space and onto the young Earth where they sowed the seeds of life. No wonder we find Mars fascinating. This could be our ancestral home. It could be we are all Martians. The Mars we thought we knew is gone, replaced by this new active changing planet. And if we don't know Mars, our next door neighbor, how can we imagine what surprises lie ahead? Our compass points across the cosmos, back in time 14 billion years, to the moment of creation. This is getting scary. It's like being inside a giant video game. are all too real. Asteroids, some of them hundreds of miles wide. This one must be about 20 miles long. And there, perched on it, a space probe. Can't have been easy parking on an asteroid traveling at 50,000 miles an hour. It's a lot of effort just to investigate some rubble. Rubble that regularly collides, breaks up, and rains down on Earth as meteorites. Our ancestors saw shooting stars as magical omens, and they were right. Rubble like this came together to make the planets, including our own. Pretty magical. By dating the meteorites found on Earth, we can tell the planets were born 4.6 billion years ago. These are the birth certificates of our solar system. For some reason, these rocks didn't form into a planet. Something must have stopped them. Something powerful. Jupiter, what a monster. 
at least a thousand times bigger than Earth, so vast you could fit all the other planets inside it. Something this massive dominates its neighbors. Its gravity is pulling the asteroids apart. And it's breathtaking. But this beauty is a beast. It's almost all gas. Land here and we'd sink straight through its layers into oblivion. And Jupiter's good looks, the product of ferocious violence. It's spinning at an incredible rate, whipping up winds to hundreds of miles an hour. Contorting the clouds into stripes, eddies, whirlpools. And this, the legendary Great Red Spot. The biggest, most violent storm in the solar system. At least three times the size of Earth, it's been raging for over 300 years. All these churning clouds must have sparked an electrical storm. Just one bolt is 10,000 times more intense than any at home. Looks like the safest place to see Jupiter is from a distance. Up there at the poles, those dancing lights, they're like the auroras back home. But the Geiger counter is going wild. Even these are deadly, generated by lethal radiation. Out here, nothing is what it seems. The universe is full of terrors, traps, Maybe this is a safe haven, the multicolored moon Io. Wrong, very wrong. Those brilliant colors are molten rock, volcanoes, spewing lava. Our journey across the universe is turning into a struggle for survival. We've got to hope that if we outlast the dangers, we'll be rewarded by wonders beyond imagination. Four hundred million miles from Earth. Flying a commercial airliner here would take nearly a century. What a weird looking place. And yet, strangely familiar. A bit like the Arctic, with all that ice, all those ridges and cracks. It's Jupiter's moon, Europa. And maybe like the Arctic, this ice is floating on water, liquid water. But we're half a billion miles from the sun. Surely Europa is frozen solid. Unless Jupiter's gravity is creating friction deep inside, heating the ice into water, allowing life to develop in the waters beneath its frozen crust. We might be feet away from aliens from a whole ecosystem of microbes, crustaceans, maybe even squid. The only thing between us and the possibility of alien life, this layer of ice.